the A7S III. It is officially announced and all specs are revealed, all questions are answered, and the biggest question that we had was, does it run Crisis? Okay, so today has been a big day for camera users, especially Sony users. If you're already in the Sony ecosystem, you got to see what the Sony A7S III was all about and see finally how all of the hype and how all of the rumors finally culminated into this official announcement. And I'm telling you, my expectations are exceeded for sure in a different way than I hoped they would be but exceeded nonetheless. And so what I wanna do in this video is give you three pros, three cons, and one freaking miracle that Sony pulled off in this camera, and we're gonna talk about that right now. Okay, so first of all, this is going to be very much an overview video, and uh, I wanna come back later in the week and later next week and dive in deeper to each part of this camera that I'm so excited about. But for now, let's get started with the pros, okay? So three pros for this camera as far as the announcement is concerned and what we saw. Number one, this has leading quality 4K and amazing movie recording modes. The Sony a7S III packs a punch when it comes to varying recording modes that you can record in. And we're gonna take a look at those right here. And so here I have the B&H sales page up and it's a great resource for specs. And so I just went up to the top and went to Sony a7S III, go to specs here and you'll be able to see a whole list of things. We're not gonna walk through it step by step, but uh, for the sake of time in this video, let's head straight to video and the recording modes. And you can see here on the screen, it is not lacking one bit. Uh, has different modes for H.265, Recording modes, 10-bit, 422, all of them, and uh, at all different frame rates, 24, 30, 60, 120. Uh, also, it has H.264 recording modes. So this is really nice if you have a computer that really can't handle that H.265 uh, file type or that codec, then you're still going to be able to shoot in the more traditional, what our computers are used to editing, H.264. Now keep in mind the H.265 is uh, those are going to be smaller file sizes because it's more compression but that h.264 even though it's a larger file size even at 422 10-bit it is going to be a little bit easier for your computer to handle and a little bit easier for it to transcode into proxies if you think you'll need to, to use proxies in your editing workflow which i always recommend and before you start upgrading to a new computer Go ahead, try editing in proxies and just see if that'll get you by so you can save more money for amazing cameras that come out. And I want to interrupt here real quick just to say thank you so much for watching the video. I would love for you to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications uh, to be notified whenever new videos come out. I'm going to be covering this camera, the Sony a7S III extensively over the next few uh, weeks. I'm gonna dive into the deep dive on all the specs, autofocus, low light, anything that we can get our hands on, maybe even some sample footage. And then of course, when it comes out, I'll be making the free guide that you can get just by going to freecameraguide.com. Sign up for, to be notified whenever that goes live. I should have it out hopefully by the beginning of October because this camera doesn't come out until September 24th, but I will make that a top priority when it does. And so you can get up and running and out and shooting quickly whenever you get this camera as well. The second pro, and this seems a bit redundant at this point, but it is so amazing that I have to mention it. This camera has even better low light than its predecessor, the a7S II, which wowed us all with its low light performance. And even the a7 III, you might even say the little brother now of these cameras, uh, the, it has great low light functionality as well. But the a7S III, Three has taken this, uh, this tr what used to be a party trick, as Philip Bloom called it, has taken this party trick and really uh, built it into an amazing skill to have in your filmmaking toolbox. Uh, one, a couple of the things that are very impressive about this low light uh, capabilities in this camera, the Sony a7S III, is it's not simply just lower noise at higher ISOs, but it's 
a better contrast at those high ISOs and better color at those high ISOs and just better detail in general. Even if it doesn't have noise, it has better detail than, uh, than its predecessor, the A7S II. So lots of, of great quality there, Keep continuing to move this skill forward. I'm very happy with what Sony has seen to do here. And of course, I'll be testing this more when I get my hands on the camera. And number three, the last pro I wanna talk about today is unlimited recording times, plus no overheating. And we wouldn't think that that would be a huge deal whenever the A7S III came out. Uh, some of us had trouble with the A7 III overheating. A lot of people had trouble with the 6500 and the 6300 before that overheating, but no one really expected overheating to be much of an issue, but we didn't expect to have uh, no recording limits at all, plus no overheating especially in light of what Canon has had to deal with, with kind of the backfire on, on their cameras overheating uh, that, that we've seen so far. Uh, their new cameras, the R5 and the R6, are having significant overheating issues from what we've seen online. Um, in light of that, the Sony a7S III having no record limits and no overheating problems is a huge pro that this camera, uh, that's just a kind of another uh, notch in its belt, another stat in its uh, resume that is really putting it above and beyond the competition. So uh, excellent job there, Sony. Okay, so we covered the three pros. Let's go to the three cons now. What are three things that I felt uh, were lacking or that they could have done better here? And to be completely honest, I'm really having to fish for these things. They are not obvious. They are not glaring uh, problems with this camera. They're just things that I, you know, for the sake of a list, I kind of had to go and look for them. But um, albeit they are things that Sony can improve and may improve upon in the future. What are they? Number one, no internal RAW recording capabilities. Uh, this is a bit disappointing. I don't think I really expected this, but if it really wanted to wow me, I was hoping that it would have some sort of internal RAW recording capabilities, at least to match or compete with Canon in that respect. And again, having that rumor about the CF Express Type A card made me think that uh, maybe they'll be able to implement internal RAW recording and they still may be able to come out with some sort of firmware update later on after launch that, um, that combines the power of the camera with those CF Express Type A cards to allow internal RAW recording. But as for right now, there's no option for internal RAW. Number two, there is not a substantially improved LCD monitor on this camera. Now, it is improved a little bit, and I actually want to take us back to B&H, and I'm gonna go over to a comparison between uh, four different cameras that are kind of all in this high tier um, uh, competition for a great video camera. We see here we got the Sony a7S three all the way to the left, the Panasonic S1H second to the left, the Canon R5 and the Canon R6 both on the right. Let's scroll down. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through everything, but let's just look at the monitor resolution right here. So the Sony a7S three has a, a 1.4 million dot uh, monitor resolution. Um, the a7S three for comparison has about a nine million dot resolution LCD monitor, uh, which it isn't horrible by any means, but when dealing with 4K, when dealing with uh, these high quality images, having that extra bit of clarity, having that extra bit of resolution really makes a, a big difference. And uh, I can say that from experience because using the Panasonic S1H's monitor, uh, it has a 2.3 million dot view find, or excuse me, monitor, and it is brilliant. It is a joy to use and a joy to look at. And I really wish Sony could have done something more like that uh, and really given us uh, everything what we could hope for there. Uh, it's the same, Canon R5 has a 2.1 million dot uh, resolution monitor, and then the R6, it, it even has a better resolution monitor than the A7S III, a 1.6 million dot. So out of all four of these, Sony is still bringing up the rear uh, as far as monitor quality, which is unfortunate, but it is improved a little bit, about 50% from the a7 III, and so uh, it's better than nothing, but it is still on our con list. The third con that I would say about the a7S III is that it doesn't have improved 
IBIS uh, for the most part. Uh, I was really hoping that it would come out with something much like the Canon R5 and it's eight stops of stabilization, which is really impressive. And in the test footage I've seen online, it, it really has been quite impressive. Good job, Canon, there. Um, but from what we see, the A7S III still has about the same level of in-body image stabilization, even when compared with, or even when combined with lenses that include uh, image stabilization as well. And I've heard it said that it has about four and a half stops of image stabilization, whereas its predecessor, the a7S III and the a7S II, both had about five stops of image stabilization. So um, it's unfortunate that that evidently, technically wise, they went backwards, but I'm hoping that that was some sort of compromise to get something else. Maybe it was cooling, maybe it was battery life. I'm not sure at this point, but I am disappointed that we don't have better IBIS and that maybe some of us could get away from using gimbals uh, for so many shots that we use. But again, that's kind of fishing for it. It's still not dramatically um, different than what we're used to, and so it's not going to be a huge deal. Okay, so those were the three cons. We've covered the three pros, the three cons, and now the one freaking miracle that Sony has pulled off. And this is this was a rumor that I thought would never happen. I thought that is crazy. That is obviously a rumor. That's insane. It's not going to happen. 16-bit RAW external recording. So this is what I wanted to come back to when we were looking at the uh, at the uh, movie recording specs. So coming back down here, external recording modes, raw 16-bit at 4.2K, full uh, full 4K, full cinema 4K up to 60 frames per second. And uh, this is going to be with an external recorder. I mentioned in several other videos that the Atomos Ninja 5 would be a great option to pair with this camera. Uh, with one caveat, and I don't have a lot of information about this just yet, but they did say in the presentation that um, there is no way to actually get the 16-bit to the, to the Ninja 5 just yet. And so I feel like that is, is a software or firmware or even a hardware option that's coming later. Maybe there has to be some sort of uh, specific um, uh, cable that you have to use. I don't know. I don't think that they clarified that in the presentation. Please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, but that's definitely something I'm going to keep an eye on over the next few days and over the next few weeks to make sure that I have everything I need to be able to take advantage of that 16-bit RAW whenever I get this camera in my hands. So overall, as a wedding filmmaker, I am very happy with this camera. I'm very pleased, I'm very uh, excited, and my expectations certainly are exceeded. Uh, so uh, I'm excited about it. Let me know in the comments below what you are most excited about for this camera now that we actually know what it can do. Let me know if you have any questions or better yet, as I'm putting together that free guide after I get my hands on the camera, let me know what you would like for me to cover in detail and I'll make sure that that is a part of the guide and I may even put out little videos uh, ahead of time before it's all completed to make sure that we're kind of learning as we go and it's not just all one big uh, thing at the end. So let me know how I can help you get up and shooting with this camera as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching this video. This has been a joy to make. Finally, I'm gonna be covering a lot more detail about the camera in the coming days and the coming weeks. And so make sure you subscribe so you get those videos. I hope you have a great day and a great week. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.